Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's nine o'clock. It's time for a talk mm -hmm. magic. Now, I have bought almost 200 talk magic interviews to Magic TV over the last couple of years. And somebody who has been on this channel, being interviewed more than one time, is joining me again today. Now, anybody who's watched this channel will know that the person I'm talking about, I consider to be one of the greatest creators in the world today. I have said and been on record before that if there was a Mount Rushmore of creators in magic, this person would be on that, 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 that mountainside. It's as simple as that. He has created published more routines, more best-selling routines than almost anybody else I know. He has changed the game over and over again. He's worked for every single production company and he continues to work at an incredible rate. He's a performer, he's an inventor, he's a creator, and he's on this channel to talk about how he's about to change the game again. I'm so excited to bring to you my good friend, the one and only... Justin Miller, JM himself. We have a chair. He was there when I started talking. Now he's gone. Yo, Justin. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> How I'm you doing, for bro? timing. I'm good. Know, How you doing? You're well. <clears throat> oh man. You know, watching the world go by and. Being able to paint a few colors in the sky at the same time is kind of a, a crazy experience right now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You look Get well. To touch some rainbows. You so. Thank you, man. Uh, I really appreciate that. I uh, I quit drinking completely. Yeah. That's great. I quit drinking completely. Uh, it's been a very long time since I've had a drink. And uh, I'm very, very thankful. Um that uh, I'm in this play well, look, for so many years and so much, so much of my life, I used drinking to mask a, a lot of the trauma and pain that I went through as a, as a child and, and as a young adult. And uh, and I was like, you know, I wonder what it's like to just work through that shit instead of <laughs> instead of masking it, right? So mm -hmm. that's the adventure I'm on right now. I'm really really happy. I've never been uh, I've never been healthier. I've never been happier in my life when it comes to uh just dealing with things and uh yeah yeah so I, i'm glad it shows fuck that's wonderful Shit, by god's grace yeah and yeah. look <clears throat> I, I, you have been so influential in every aspect of magic within this industry ever since you burst onto the scenes all those years ago you were the person that put illusionist on the map you were the person that has been out there consistently creating, innovating, taking things in a different direction. A lot of significant stuff that's happened in this industry has been centered around you. I remember years ago when you were doing the uh, maps, the, uh, you know, the, the, you, mm. you, when you were taking down piracy, that was all about you every single time. And the reason I wanted to get you on this channel, magicians against piracy, magicians right? Magicians against piracy, yeah, exactly. We have to, we have to, we have to make it, we have to make it clear because those asshole, fucking sicko, uh, pedophile motherfuckers took that fucking meaning and turned it into something else. So we're not talking about you, you fucking sick, sick <laughs> motherfuckers, magicians. And you're in the magic, and they're in the magic community, dude. They're in the magic community. It's it's disgusting. It really is disgusting. And I've had unfortunate situations with some of those uh, very sick people when I was very very young. I can't name the names because of the other stuff, but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Magicians so against magicians that. against piracy, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> you have changed the game over and over again. And the reason I wanted to get you on the channel is, first of all, I wanted to chat. I wanted to talk to you about what you've been up to. I wanted to talk to you about your views on stuff that's happening in magic right now. But mm. I wanted to talk to you, first of all, about one very specific thing. You're about to turn the magic industry on its head again. Because the way that magic has been released and the way that magic has been taught up until this point is the way that it's been done for years. The way that you kind of, you know, back back in the day when you were the face of Illusionist, very little has changed from that point to now. We may be doing downloads now and streaming instead of DVDs, but the, the, by and large, it's the same thing. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a trailer, it's a product, you buy the product, you learn, you learn the trick. And yeah. you've, you've had this epiphany you're now actively changing the way that you're doing things. Because mm. up until very recently, 
I've talked about this on interviews with you in the past. The only way you can get a JM product outside of a couple of exceptions with Illusionist is to get on your mailing list and buy stuff and you release mm -hmm. it in a very limited quantity. But now mm -hmm. you're changing the game. You're doing something completely and totally different. And I know there's a lot of creators, big name creators, who you speak to that are following your lead and they're considering doing the same thing. I think this could mm -hmm. have an impact on the industry. And I wanted to talk to you about it. So you could, uh, as the person who's innovated this approach, you could kind of uh, talk about what you're doing, why you've gone down this route, and why you think it's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, a great way to start this, actually. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that I have a gifting in, and I don't know why, I don't know how it works, but it's just something that comes naturally to me. I can see models in my head of future um of future uh, results, basically. If it, in other words, I, I create models in my head, and and I see if it's played out this way, this will become the final, uh, the the harvest of that of that situation, or the uh, this will be the natural pro progression of that concept in ten years, fifteen years from now, right? And so, one of the things I looked at uh, that's really caught my eye in the past, probably. 20 years so far is where's the next thing what's the next thing so and I, so let me give you an example so iphone so they just keep coming out with new iphones but it's the same iphone yeah when's the next jump in technology where where because at one point we did have an iphone and that was the jump yeah. when we jumped to this idea that we could have a computer in our pocket we didn't have that before um, when we had VCRs and then we went to deep, to Blu-rays and DVDs, you see what I'm saying? There were jumps. We could clearly see these jumps as new technology, new ideas, moving forward, changing the entire game of the industry, whatever they were in. We become so stagnant in our reality, in our, our societies, that I don't, where's the new stuff at? What's, what's, in fact, Hollywood's on strike. I mean, we're going backwards now, if you really think about it. We're not moving forward in any form or fashion. We're static, right? Yeah. And so when it comes to magic, I always think the same thing. What's the new What's the new thing? What's the new thing? Not a new effect, but the new way to produce knowledge and then create a, a blanket over that knowledge and producing it and giving it to the community. What is that way? Well, for the longest time, and I helped create this, it was, uh, this is Silver Dream, or this is Autograph. I'm Justin Miller, and this is, by the way, I'm sorry I started that, guys. Everybody does it now. I'm so sorry. It's so fucking lazy. It's so lazy to introduce something, but you have to understand something. I remember the day I came up with it. We were shooting, we were shooting Silver Dream. <clears throat> That's the first time I said it. We are shooting Silver Dream, and we're, we're doing B-roll footage, right? And Brad's like, let's do the outro. Let's get to the, let's do our outro. We've already got our intro. I'm like, okay, let's do an outro. Oh, I'm sorry. We were doing an intro, not the outro. And, uh, and, I, and I was trying to figure out how do I say what this is? Because think about it for a second. When mm -hmm. you're performing magic, you don't go, oh, wait, folks, and this next trick's called Silver Dream. But you don't do that. No. You don't name the effect when you're performing for people. Does Martin Lewis say, okay, folks, uh, I'm going to do cardiograph for you right now? And uh, what? No. No, those names are created for the magicians. Yeah. Who are buying the trick. That's what the name's for. Yeah. That's why a name is so important. That's why a name is so important when you're creating magic and you're putting it onto an effect because you're not creating a name for the people who are watching the effect. You're, you're creating the name for the person who's going to buy the effect, who's going to who's going to support the effect, who's going to give money to get that effect. So names are really important. I was like, well, how do I? What do I just say? Okay, welcome to the three coin band. Wait, that's not going to work. And it just hit me. What is this? Well, when I created the effect, I called it Silver G. Oh, and that's another thing. Before I started marketing effects and I was just creating magic for my own personal stuff, for my restaurant gigs, for my per my professional work, and all the shows I was doing back in the day. You and I both know this. We create the name yeah. because it gives a label to us of what the trick is. And we were taught that.
by ancients of old, all the people before us. Yep. Yeah. The spell books, meaning magic books. Mm-hmm. You open up the book, and what's the trick called? David Harkey calls this trick this. And so what we so again, but it was to market to magicians through to a book. Think about it. So so we create the name. It seems to me that the name was created. The reason that the names of magic is created is so that there is a well, I bet there was this. I bet at one point in history, somebody was like, well, what do you call that? And then I bet one person goes, I don't even know. I have no idea. I never thought about it. Why should I call it anything? Mm. I mean, you just experienced it. Why should I call it something? So at some point, somebody had to go, we need to label these things. But the reason they labeled them is for the broader community to grasp them. Yeah. And I think also it's because there's so many different versions of everything that they wanted to make sure that this was completely separate name-wise from the original or from the inspired effect that came from. Yeah. So that the magician gets the credit for creating the effect and finding a new way to do it or finding a different hook or finding whatever he found or and she found right mm -hmm. whatever so i've always been thinking about that like so so this is this is just came to me this is silver dream and then i just started on every fucking thing this is autograph this is loops this is this this is this. so i apologize about that <laughs> we were trying to create something for an edgy company you know and that was the best way to do it so but here's but here's my kind of my point even that hasn't changed. This is. It's everywhere. Yeah, it is. You do it. You do it. I do. I do. And that's why I'm <laughs> laughing. I do it every single product. My name's Craig Petty, and this is Cube 52. My name's Craig Petty. This is EDC. I do it every single trailer. I, st I started that, folks. I started that. I, you can actually pinpoint it to me. I started it. Uh, so I know I created this whole genre around it that everybody doesn't know. Uh, and it's it's so even that hasn't changed right it's like well you know it's so so another good example of the way i think differently and, and how i see things is definitely in models i was the first one to put patrick page's idea of the build change into someone's hand where it happened in their hand and i put that out with paul harris presents called first hand the name's in the title. The name is in the title. The concept's in the title. Nobody had ever done it before. Everybody. Gregory Wilson, uh, Steve Haynes, um, 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 uh, 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 oh, shit, Carl Hine, Piney 500, Sanders. Richard Sanders, which really threw the game off its fucking kilt when he, uh, Came out with the second version, Extreme Burn, not Extreme Burn, but the, deck, the next extreme one, right? Extreme Burn, Extreme Burn, Locked and Loaded. Locked and Loaded. When it, yeah, when it, well, when Extreme Burn came out, he destroyed the game. He destroyed it. He was the he was the one, and everybody else has fell to the wayside. But all of them, every single one of those ideas, were still in the confines of the magician's hands. Yeah, every one of them. Yeah, they had never deviated from a Patrick's original idea which which is fine that's how innovation works but i thought to myself i'm like well i got i don't want to just have another fucking bill change that happens in my hands on the market it's just going to get well first of all richard sanders already killed it nobody's going to look at mine so what if i could figure out a way to do it in their hands and i went to paul with this idea <clears throat> i said wow that would be really good and so we just started brainstorming and brainstorming. We had like three hour sessions on the phone through Skype and just wonderful times. And I finally figured out how to do it. You know, you were with the World Magic uh, Wizard, Wizard, whatever at that time. You guys, you were the exclusive, uh, you guys were the exclusive uh, sellers in the UK. It's an incredible trick. It's incredible. Yeah. It's as good yeah. now as and, and that's exactly right. That's because you know, and that's the reason why is because when things change, they have they have a um, they have an elasticity with it, and I mean a stretching. I'm I'm using I'm not saying elasticity, elasticity because they they're so unique and so new 
that they they have a, a shelf life uh, or, or a um, a life of its own that continues past the release date that continues past years uh, beyond you know what i mean yeah so thinking of all that stuff and how my mind works i said like, well what, what what's new in magic right now well how's magic changed and the way we communicate well we got this zoom stuff now right yeah that's what we're doing right now <clears throat> well what do we do with zoom what are we doing with zoom well you and me are chatting you and me are just talking. Well, that's, that's, what that's what everybody. That's what everybody does. But, but it's connecting people all over the world. Like, mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. you know, when you first shot Silver Dream, if I told <laughs> you you could be talking to me hundreds of miles away, literally in real time, with the quality of this conversation that we're having right now, nobody would have believed that in a million years. Unheard of. Unheard of. Unheard of. Right. We're sharing information, right? We're chatting, we're sharing information. Yeah. We're allowing each other to hear each other and to go back and forth with concepts, ideas, and we're responding in kind with with, with our own uh, viewpoints of the world, still staying within the confines of the relationship and the structure of the conversation, right? Well, well that's what a lecture is, right? That's what a lecture is. That's what a lecture does, is to relay information to a broader audience of the subject matter that they're interested in and and retaining what is given through that process. So we've really upped the game when it comes to um, how knowledge is presented these days, is we have more opportunities for, to present knowledge. Now, that comes with a really big price, though, too, because you have misinformation that's all over the place. There's too much information right now for people to understand and hold on to. Human beings at this level of our of whatever this is, we were not designed at this point to handle this much uh, knowledge of news or catastrophes over the world. You can't care about every fucking thing in the world. It's impossible. It's impossible. So how do you structure it down to care about the things that are important to you? Well, that's why you have local news stations. Their concept is connect people in the local area so they don't feel all lost in the world that's why we have area codes it connects people at a label and they go oh i'm part of this little community instead of oh my gosh what's happening in chile i'm sorry i don't give a fuck what's happening in chile you know why i'm not in chile <laughs> they don't care what they don't think they're not thinking about me right now no have you ever just tried to think about what's going on in some other place at this very moment in time? It's hard. It's not an easy thing to do. No, it's not. And knowledge gets lost in that translation. Yeah. So what happens with magic products? What happens with magic products? Let's be honest, Greg, and I need you to communicate here. We put a product out. We hope that people start doing it. We hope it's not just the hype for that one little moment in time, in space, in marketing, in ad reflect, and copy, and all this other stuff. We hope it's beyond the realm of just handing over your hard-earned money and putting it in a fucking magic drawer. We hope it's beyond that. But the reality of everything is very simple. That's not the reality. How many effects of yours do you think are in a magic drawer right now? You know, uh, my <clears throat> ego say that none of them but in reality you know fuck your ego yeah fuck you, your ego yeah there's gonna be there's gonna be yeah and that's one magician's house that's one magician's house mm -hmm. that's one person now let's well why do we put all that work into it man what the fuck it's the same thing as when you're performing an effect for somebody it's and I've talked about this with almost every creator I I could come across because it's it's and, I, and I'll ask you the same question. How do you get them <clears throat> from the moment of what the f oh that's a double back car pull <laughs> me <laughs> of that oh my god what the you're the devil oh my god, look at this oh what ah, woo, ah. and then oh we have to go by the way oh man it was nice meeting you great to see. Mm. How long do they tell this story? When does the story dissipate in their mind? When does that not become a story? When does the next more fascinating and more 
enchanting or astonishing thing in their life take over that moment that you created? Because it happens. That's a big, big thing for magicians to really think about it. What, what are we doing? Are we making a lasting impression? Are we supposed to make a lasting impression? Or are, or are we supposed to give them uh, something to hold on to at that very moment that even though that's going to dissipate a little bit, it'll still be there like a fragment over their life? Is that what we're supposed to do? I don't, you know, it's, it, it's one of those things. And I'll ask you the same question. How do you make a lasting moment like last? Like, because we don't see them again. And you and I both know that the story that they tell people is not the real thing that they saw. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. They say something completely different. Yeah, they do. And if they come to, and I, when I was, when I was very, very young, I was working nightclubs and stuff. I was very, very fortunate when I was uh, 15 years old, I started working in the CD nightclubs of uh, smoky areas and stuff. Uh, that's why I got into all the probably mischief I got into when I was young. Um, but I would do a fierce and floating cigarette every night. Every fucking night. And you know the effect. We all know the effect. If you don't know the effect, it's the greatest floating cigarette that's ever created. There's no question. I don't think it's even a debate at this point. John Kennedy's can't even fucking come close. Kennedy, you have to have that fucking thing and your thumb's moving it. It looks all fucking weird. It looks like a marionette with the fucking shaking, the cigarette shaking as a fucking. <laughs> Remember that trailer? Like, what the fuck? Why are you having your hand like that? What are you doing? And why are you wearing a checkered shirt? You've never worn a checkered shirt before. <laughs> it was a, hey, it's a good, a, hey, a, hey, I remember when I first saw it, it was, it was still magical, you know, because the cigarette case then turns into the matches and then the, and then the match li lights by itself and then flies up. But then when you see how it's done, it's this huge fucking contraption. Fearson was the first one to take something so beautiful. I, I, and here's what it is. If you're using thread, what's the best way to make it look like you're not using thread? A glowing, fiery object that's lit. Yeah. Where would the thread be? How would thread be connected somewhere when it's a lit object? There's no way you could think that, right? Yeah. So he took that out of, and I'm talking about for spectators' minds. He took it out of their minds immediately. It's not a thread trick. It's not done by thread. It must be real magic. Well, you know the trick. It goes up and down, sticks to your thumb, sticks to your finger, goes through a loop like this, and then comes right back up into your mouth, lit. Right? Yeah, that's exactly what the effect is. What do you think people who saw me who came back months later told their friends? If they were describing the trick, what do you think they told them? No, knowing how laymen remember tricks, I'd probably say they were saying it was floating around the room. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Man, and this is how they, can you do that trick where you made that cigarette float all the way around the room and then, uh, and then like out in the lobby, like all this other weird stuff, and then back into your mouth? I'm like, I don't know. I don't think I can. <laughs> I, I, uh, give me, like, I'll put the system together, but that'll take a while. That's but the general rule. My point is yeah, it, yeah oh. it, you know, the, the, the trick that a layman sees a lot of the time, it becomes 20 times better having told the story afterwards. Exactly, because they literally are creating the story in their head. Too many magicians try to create the story and narrative when they're, when they're performing the magic, and they don't give room for the spectator, for the audience, to have their own adventure and journey. And I think that's cheating the audience of something very special. You, I, 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 we I want them to have that mythical idea. Of course we do. How many times have you heard? Oh, you mean David Copperfield who made the uh, who made the Empire State Building disappear? I'm like he did what? I'll right? never forget have years ago. I, I, I'll never get, forget years ago. I was at a restaurant residency, <clears throat> and I did Harlan's hover card. Uh, sure, sure. Great, great trick. And the the same yeah. people brought their friends in next week, and they were like, "Oh, show them that you did the trick that you did, where you made the card float up into the uh, into the, the you know into the ceiling." I'm like, "Absolutely, I didn't do that trick." <laughs> You're like, "I did that. That's amazing. Better than I thought I was." <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, why does our brains do that? What's well, simple? I mean, 
<clears throat> our brains are are designed for some form of fashion that when we hear stories or we see something, we create a a world in which that has to, because he, I and I think this is where this happens. I think what happens is because there's no place for that concept to fit into a person's mind because they've never seen it before, right? right? It's the whole. It's the same idea. It's a. It's a. It's 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 a very strange um, uh, thing that the brain does, but it's the exact same idea when a group of uh, people who have never seen a ship before, who have never seen. Uh, there's actually stories of this where tribes would be on the the uh, the the shore of of like an ocean, right? Yeah. And they would look out at the horizon of where the ocean is, and of course they just see clouds and they see you know whatever whatever. But there were ships there the entire time. Now, why didn't they see them? Because they've never seen a ship before. They didn't know what a ship looked like. So mm -hmm. they didn't have a place to label it into their mind and into their reality set list, if you will, of, oh, that's a ship. I know what a ship is now. Once they realized what a ship was, they realized it was separate from a cloud, separate from the ocean. But they just thought it was part of the ocean. They didn't know what it was. Okay, it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing that happens. Um, when when we're creating when when we're trying to have a lasting moment with people right it's the exact same thing that happens when we're trying to produce something in someone's mind well since they don't have a place for it yet I, what the brain does i think there's good evidence for this what the brain does is it has to create a world right what's the in order to fit that that event in you have to create the world first yeah. and then put the event in. You can't put the event in and create a world around it because it disturbs reality completely for them and they can't handle that kind of thing. That's why, I don't know if you know this, but that's why. Uh, well, let me ask you a question. When did you see, the very first time, when did you ever see a flip phone in TV? A, a flip phone. A flip phone. Fuck those, like years ago, years and years and years ago. Well, no, I mean in TV. Yeah, on TV. The first time it was, uh huh? I'm, I, I couldn't tell you the year or anything, probably the 90s. Okay, okay. What was it? What did you see then? I, 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 uh, the Matrix. Okay, okay. Fair enough. I so think I'm, let's go back even Matrix. further. Let's. Yeah, let's go back to let's go back 70, 80 years, roughly. Uh, do you what is it? Well, what, what would when did Star Trek first come out? Would that be 1970? So, how many years is that? Uh, it was the 60s, it was the 60s. Star Trek came out in the 60s. 60s. So, how many years is that? How many years is that? Uh, uh, 70 years, something like that. About 70 years, right? That was the very first time that the community, meaning human beings in general, saw a flip phone that they didn't even know it was a flip phone. Good point. <laughs> Beat me up, Scotty. Huh? Yeah. When's the first time that people saw a microwave in uh, uh, the very first time they ever saw microwaves? Do you remember? It was the Jetsons. It was the fucking cartoon, the Jetsons. Now, here's the point of this. Here's the point of this. They, 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 the powers that be, when they create something and they want human beings to try it, they don't just put it out on the market immediately. And why do they do that? It's real simple. Because they don't, because human beings wouldn't know what the fuck it is. Hmm. you yeah. have to show what it is first in a world in an environment yeah yeah and then hand it over to them so they had to show what a microwave does on a cartoon for people to understand the concept of a microwave before they put it on the market they had to show what a flip phone was in a world that they watch on TV that they've created, the, the producers and directors and everything, and the actors, it's all designed to get people to get used to something. Magic's the exact same way, and we don't think about it that way, unfortunately. They have to create a world first in order to put the event in. And the world they create is more fantastical, and it has to be because the event that they're watching, card on ceiling, cigarette going here, card in pocket whatever the thing is is too fantastical if you will if you don't put that in the construct of an actual world first 
And unfortunately, too many magicians create a narrative where they don't allow the, the, the spectator or the audience to create that world for themselves. And that's why a lot of people don't get reactions because they, they, they step over the, uh, the spectator's ability to be able to create that world for themselves. When people respond for, with our magic, oh my God, what the fuck? Those kind of things. Mm -hmm. What do you think's happening? They've already created the world. They put the event in it and they come together. Boom. That's what the reactions are. That's what reactions are. It's their mm -hmm. response to the world they created. And now they're responding to the moment, the, to, the, to, the, to the momentary visual aspect of what we're doing. Yeah. That's why mentalism has more of an emotional response. Hmm. Magic has a physical response. Have you ever noticed that? Yes, I have. Yeah. Nobody talks about this shit. Nobody talks about this. Have you heard anybody talk about this? No, <laughs> never. Not once. Not even somebody like McBride, who you'd think <clears throat> talk about something like this. I've never heard him say anything like that. Sure. Well, sure. So I bring something to the game that's a lot different. Okay. So I say all this for a reason. Because in, in, inside this model that I've figured out, and I've really been working on this idea because I, I, I've been at the, I've been at the, I've been at the uh, precipice at every level of how to market magic, how to, how to create content for magic, how to push uh, knowledge and information into people's hands when they buy something or through lectures or through workshops or through uh, uh, bot products, right? All this stuff. The whole point of this is creating something new, putting, putting it together and push and putting it into the community's hands. And for the longest time, it's all been about tricks, 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 tricks. Here's a trick. Here's a trick. $40, $50, $80, so whatever, whatever. And then yeah. recently I was like, okay, I need to do something new. I literally sat down and I, and I said, not a trick. I need to do something new with magic. And it came to me within like, <clears throat> I'd say three days and I worked it all out in my head of the whole thing. And I'm like, you know what? I think this is going to work. I think this will solve a lot of problems. So I hereby am not putting out any more one trick tricks anymore. Right. As we used to call them just DVDs. <laughs> it was always hard to put the gimmick in the DVD. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do we stop that? How do we, how do we, how do we, how do we fracture that, if you will? Well, here's the solution. At least it is for me, and I think people like me who are as knowledgeable as I am and who is as prolific as I am with, with props and ideas and, uh, and, 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 and uh, effects and uh, choreography and, and psychology and all this other stuff. We know so much right now. If you and I stopped creating, we'd still be in the history books. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? So, so that's not a problem. We both agree with that. We don't want our stuff just pushed into magic drawers anymore, right? We want more people to perform our stuff because why are we creating it in the first place if we don't want people to perform it? Mm -hmm. I might as well not even put it out or come up with it or put all the money and energy towards it. If people are just going to put it in their magic drawer, well, they put it in their magic drawer because they're not connected to the sacrifice it takes to buy the product anymore. Mm -hmm. They have the money transaction, but they don't have the actual sacrifice of what it means for them to have it in their hands because it's not unique anymore if another trick comes out every three seconds from everybody in the world. It gets buried very quickly. So how do we bring this up? Well, do you remember a guy named Dr. Harlan Tarbell, sir? Absolutely. Who was he? Well, he wrote the Tarbell series. What's the Tarbell series? The definitive uh, set of books designed to teach you every aspect and facet of magic from close up to stage illusions, all points in between the ultimate book set for magicians. 
But do you know, and I'm sure you do, but I'm 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 doing this for the audience, uh, that it wasn't started as book stuff. No, actually, Jay, Jam, I didn't know that. It was never a book to begin with. People don't understand what Tarbell was. I have worked tirelessly to collect every single original Tarbell lesson. Why are the, it wasn't a book? It wasn't a book. They were lessons that were sent in the mail. I have every single one here. All the originals. Wow. 1926 this started, by the way. 1926. These were put into envelopes. And they were and the gimmicks were included with each envelope for the effects taught in the lessons. Wow. These were not originally books. These this was a mail-in subscription service. Now, why a mail-in subscription? And by the way, it had never been done before. It had never been done before. Why a subscription service? That's interesting. Well, when you have a subscription service for something you care about, you know the sacrifice that you're making every single month. Harlan understood this. Tarbell understood this. Because... He realized, well, if they're willing to sacrifice the money every month for these lessons, then I should be willing to sacrifice making the props available to them. Because why else put a, a subscription thing together if you're not going to include everything? Yeah. Kyle. Gangbusters. They went like gangbusters. That had never been done before. It was a brand new concept. And people ate it up. I can imagine. It was so successful that magicians had to figure out that we don't want this to just go away. These, has, these have to be preserved somehow. So they wrote the books. So they could be in everybody's library. They're not in magic drawers. They're in the books. Yeah. Okay. Stick with me on this. So Harlan talks about this. He he calls the magician the man in the profession in these lessons. He doesn't call them a magician. Well, that's an interesting name. Why a man in the profession? Why not just magician? Well, Harlan was really much of a scientist as much as he was a magician, though, too. And he understood that a magician is someone who has taken the profession of something, and it's a very uniquely designed concept that the laity, that's the names they used to instead of spectator, laity, it shows you how old this is, could understand the respect, instead of just saying magician, by calling it the man of the profession, because it creates this understanding that this isn't just uh, tricks. These aren't just tricks. These are these this 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 comes from someone's brain who understands these concepts. Mm -hmm. And so there was this really interesting deep interaction between the subs the subscriber of these lessons and Tarbell himself. That was that was passed through these lessons. And we've always tried to keep that in magic, this mentoring concept, right? We've always tried to keep it. And it's a really hard concept to keep now mm. because of YouTube. Yeah. And exposure. And copying. And non-original material coming out. Yeah. And stolen material coming out. It's hard to, to have that mentoring relationship. I started the Skype one-on-one -on -one sessions over 19 years ago. Um, I started the custom DVD series uh, around the same time. This is before YouTube. This is before all that other stuff. Um, and I realized that people need to have the interaction when they're learning something. You're really not learning it the correct way if you really are just watching a DVD or a tutorial of us showing you how to do it. Even though you're learning it, you're not learning it. 
because you and I both know what happens when they're when they're starting when they put the props in front of them and they're watching the DVD or they're watching the download or the tutorial. What's happening? Somewhere along the line, they maybe are not able to do a thing, and now we've moved past it in the DVD. Yeah, and now they're like, yeah, but I don't I, wait. How's it? And then they rewind it or whatever. And they're like, yeah, I still don't get it though. So it's not the greatest way to 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 bring about knowledge. It still isn't. It's 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 been efficient and successful for the time period, but I think there's still a better way. Okay. And that's the one-on-one -on -one interaction with a group of people at the same time with the props in front of them. Now, conventions and lecturers, well, lecturers, and I, I, I started doing this at a very uh, young uh, professional career age. I would do a lecture for people, <clears throat> but then I started noticing after the lecture, people had more questions about things. You know, you've done this before. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I thought to myself, well, I, well, wait a second. Well, what if I just did a workshop separate from the lecture? And so what we would do is I would set up a workshop the day before. So let's say I got into town and I'd set up a workshop the day before the lecture or the night of the lecture during the day mm -hmm. or after the lecture, the workshop starts. Well, what's a workshop? A workshop is this. You pay a specific price for a seat with the props included. And there's only a certain number of seats that are available. What's a lecture? Everybody's invited. We sell package deals at lectures, but they don't have the props in hand as we're teaching that stuff, do they? No, they don't. They never do. Because we're teaching the magic first, and then later on we go, oh, by the way, everything you've seen, I have for sale. Yeah. And here's my package deal. Well, what, what have we done? We've done a disservice to them. We've now told everything, and now we go, here you go. Hope you learn it okay. Mm. Now, again, it has been sufficient and successful for a long period of time. But workshops allow everyone to come together, props with in hand, as you're going through the material together. And if somebody's behind, and by the way, raise your hands if you're not getting this, guys. You know how it is. Raise your hands if you're not getting this, because we're going to stop. I want to make sure everybody is on the right page. Now we all stop. And now, because we, we now are giving attention to this one person, Everybody can see what's happening, and if they're confused, they can look over. The... It's so perfect. They're learning in real time, and that's what's missing right now. See, that's what mentoring used to do. You, another magician would show you something, and you're like, oh, my gosh. And they're like, would you like to learn it? You know, at magic clubs or whatever. You know this. You know this. Magic hangouts at magic shops on Saturdays or whatever. And then you teach that your stuff or they teach you their stuff and you're learning it right then and there. That's the best way to teach something when it comes to magic. It's the most efficient way. So I've taken and borrowed this title, the man in the profession. And instead of putting out individual effects anymore, I know so much about so much. It's, it'd be a shame to just let it go to waste. So I'm producing these workshops and it, it's called the man of the professional workshops. It's on my website, mentalsites.com. You'll see the link there. It'll, you'll see man of the profession, click on it. That's the only page that'll exist for me to sell anything on my website anymore. Now people are like, well, it's probably a cash grab, not a cash grab. Uh, you, you saw the website, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I did. Yeah. And every workshop's three to four hours long. It could be five or six. You know me. You know me. Yes, I do. It's uh, my, <laughs> my, my Netflix was what? Six fucking hours? Six hours. Nonstop. Plus the Q, plus the Q&A was two hours? Yep. Eight fucking hours. Yeah. So you know me. So they're going to get way more than whatever. 
But I want to read this to, to everybody. In 1926, a great man took upon himself a task that had never been ventured. He pursued the endeavor to share his love for a craft where all participants could be magically enriched. I'm speaking, of course, of the late, great Harlan Tarbell, who produced a service that changed magic forever, all gimmicks included. He referred to the magician effectually as the man in the profession. So in honor of his rich and bountiful work, I'm borrowing his title and calling my workshops the man in the profession. Thank you, Tarbell. Each workshop will include all the props, secret links, times, and dates will be sent to all seat holders. And then it goes, and then the next thing will be the actual workshop of what the workshop is. So I've, I've, I've done, I've sold out four workshops already. The dates wow. and times have already been sent to people. The gimmicks and props have already been sent to two of those workshops. I'm working on the last two right now. And I have the Vanish workshop up right now. And what this is, is you're getting all the props, plus you're getting so many more props because I have so many more ideas. So I'm including everything in this package deal. There's only a certain number of seats for, for people. That's it. So last workshop was 16 seats. Once those packages are gone, it's it. I don't sell the, the workshop by itself because I don't think that's a good thing to do. I'm not advertising it. I'm not doing that because, okay, so you buy the workshop. Now you have to look at the material. It, 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 they're all prop stuff. Right? You're not going to be able to do it. People are not going to search for stuff. They don't want to do that. They want everything included. Mm. So for this one, I'm only doing 16. So it's not a money grab. No. If it was money grab, you'd have I, it, 60 seats, yeah. I'd do at least 70, dude. Are you kidding me? And I could sell them in a heartbeat. Uh, so now what it does too is it puts the sacrifice back into the participant's hand. Mm. Because they know what it takes now to get these props to watch this workshop and to be a part of something. So Zoom has given us a perfect opportunity for this. Those little Brady Bunch little fucking boxes. Yep. Oh, Jonathan, what's going on? Okay, everybody stop for a second. Let's look at Jonathan. What can I do there? Boom, I highlight Jonathan's video. Everybody sees Jonathan at the exact same time. And we work out what's missing right now. Got it? Oh, that looks so good, Jonathan. Awesome. You're very welcome, man. Boom. Let's get back to it. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So there's no, there's also no more forcing information that's not needed. All the information that's needed for the effect and for the concept and for the plot is extracted out to the, its last drop. And everybody's getting one-on-one -on -one attention. Now with the Skype one-on-one -on -one stuff, what did I do? I did one-on-one -on -one attention. But I'm only reaching one person at a time. With these workshops, I'm reaching as many people as, as the seats available for. Yeah. And I think, no, not I think. Not only do I know this is the, the right thing for me to do, I really believe if every creator took upon themselves, because all you have to do is have a mailing list. And also, if you can't get 16 or 20 people to your fucking thing, get the fuck out of magic. You're not ready to do it, first of all. So if you're worried about that, if you think that that's a problem, you're not ready. You need to be in magic a lot longer. You need to know a lot more things. So like with Vanish, I'm, I, this is the new one that's up. Uh, the first one is Invisible Forces. What's Invisible Forces? It's all my work on thread work. And they got all the gimmicks included. What's the second one I'm doing? Leather and lace. What's leather and lace? What's leather and lace? It's all my work on the stripper deck and a Z-fold wallet. Stuff you've never seen before. Coming from the Justin Miller fucking universe. Stuff that looks like fucking trick photography. What? You can make a stripper deck look like trick photography? You damn well can. And I'll show you how. So I'm getting magicians to take things out of the magic drawer. That's great. That's a beautiful fucking thing for this art. It's so important. Who would have thought that in 2023, and by the way, who's ever done a, a fucking uh, uh, exhaustive workshop on the stripper deck? Give me one name. I'll wait. Nobody. No one. Who, who's done an exhaustive workshop on uh, coin boxes? David Roth. Instant name, right? Instant name. Yeah. yeah. Roth. So it's not that you can't and, think of anything. Uh, they just don't exist. 
Yeah. I think the guys like Copeland Coins have done quite a lot on Akita boxes and stuff, but I know their material, I know your material. Yeah. In a completely different direction. Dude, can you man. imagine a workshop on the dewdrop on the dewdrop change? That's gonna be a thing. Uh, can you imagine the props that are gonna be included for the dewdrop change? <laughs> so the third one is Lucid Dream. Now, what's Lucid Dream? Well, you're going to love this, and, I, and I, I'm so happy we're doing this interview. Um, Lucid Dream is all of my work, all of my new ideas, too, on my original dream purse and your uh, original creation, independently of mine, Apparition. The Apparition Coast. I would like you to be a part of that, if you, if you, a, a special guest at that workshop, if you would be... I so are honored you, are you uh, fucking kidding me i would be honored mm -mm, absolutely mm -mm. honored very cool i would very be cool you try and stop me i will i will i, I will <laughs> i will be on that fucking thing whether you want me there or not that would be amazing what do they get for that you know that's already sold out by the way but what did they get they got they get the apparition they get uh the slash dream purse okay they get all the gimmicks that's included there they get an extra copper silver coin. Oh, wait, these two that's used for. They get an extra purse that's not gimmicked. They get three gold metal coins. So think so ready for this? You're gonna you're gonna love this as soon as I tell you. Think David Roth of the three coins when oh each coin changes to a different thing. Remember that? He, or he, he takes the three slugs. Remember the three slugs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And he changes them into three different coins? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Imagine the exact same effect with the Dream Purse Apparition set where the last coin changes in their hand under the purse. So you show you show the two coins. You say, if so if, if I were to go to China and I were to make a wish. So I call it the, uh, the I call it the, um, what am I calling this? Hold on. I call it the, I call it the wish coins. So you show these three coins, nothing else in your hands, and you say these coins are used to make a wish. Now, in different places, in different uh, countries, uh, it, would, it would be a different wish altogether. For instance, let me give you an example. And then I take this coin. If I place this coin in my hand and I wish I was in China, I could get the China, Chinese coin. That's the first one. And then I say, but if I wish I was more like back in the 1800s. Or not 1800s. Uh, not, uh, what's the? I'm losing the date right now. What's the date on the Eisenhower? The Eisenhower. Dollar. 19, yeah. So yeah. So let's say uh, let's say we go back to 1965, 1952, where the coins were Eisenhower. Boom. And then the second coin changes. And I've already placed this coin on their hand, and the purse is covering it. And I say, now you make a wish. And then when they wish, it turns into the coin uh, connects to the their wish, but. And when you lift it up, it now is the coin in their hand. And then at the end, they all all the coins, they say, but if but the wishes only last for a few seconds. And I place this. So let's say this is like this. Let's say this is the reveal right now, right? So and all that's used is their hands and the person, the three coins. So now at, this is on their hand. I say, but the problem with wishes is if you they, they don't last long. And the two coins change visibly back into the two gold coins in my hand. And when they lift this up, that was bad. When they lift this up, though, oh, this is the wrong purse. When they lift this up, it's now changed in their hand back to the wish coin. Beautiful. And the purse is empty. Your hands are empty. And there's no other coins to get rid of. It's just three coins left. Three coins start, three coins end. It's beautiful. That's so they get that. They get a 12-inch silk for a killer transposition. They get all your original ideas, all my original ideas, and all the new material that I've created since then. And I've got some new so stuff this isn't well for you as well. That, I'm so happy to hear that. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. So happy to hear that. So there you go, folks. A special guest, Craig Petty, is going to be at the Lucid Dream Workshop. Uh, so, and then the next one, so, so what I've done now these are all booked up until January, okay? When January starts 2024, they're going to be once every two months instead of once a month. Right now, they're once a month all the way to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So October's booked for uh, Invisible Forces right before Halloween. 
Uh, November, I have um, uh, uh, Leather and Lace, which is a stripper deck, and the Z Fold Wallet. It's a locking Z Fold Wallet, by the way. A locking Z Fold Wallet. Totally different. Um, and then the um, and then and then December is going to be Lucid Dream, and then uh, January will be Vanish. And then when we start twenty twenty four, they will go once every two months. And the reason I'm doing this because and Greg made a great point, Gregory Wilson. He said, do, do every two months because every other month, because give them enough time to work out the material for a month. I'm like, that's fucking brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to inundate them with one every single month because it's the same thing as putting out another trick or something like that. But they get all the props. They get every single thing included. Uh, and then they also get uh, a seat to the live event and then the digital copy when it's done. So I'll give you an example for Vanish, which is the last one uh, before 2024. I have 13 seats left, by the way, guys. And I uh, and there's 16 seats for this one. Uh, for this one, check this out. They get two units, so they get four Vanish gimmicks. Okay? That okay. right there is $100. That would be $100. Dude. Okay. They get one, rash, one regular matching deck. Again, I'm not going to guess if they have it at their house. Fuck that. I want everything to have in to have for them to have in their hands, right? Yeah. I don't want them looking for things at their house. They need to be able to sit down, ready for the event, ready to go through it with everything in hand. One regular matching deck, one regular Sharpie, one black 12 inch silk, 10 disposable decks, and Paul's original vanishing deck, plus a seat to the live event, plus a digital copy of the workshop when finished. I could easily sell the seat to the live event without any props for fifty dollars, easily. That's one hundred and fifty right there, just with the gimmicks and the the vanish gimmicks and the the seat. With all the other stuff included, dude, you're looking at about two hundred dollars if you were to buy all that shit, roughly. Yeah, yeah. it's only one hundred and ten. It's only one hundred and ten. Mm. So they will always be at least a hundred dollars per seat but you will get every single thing in the package. No brainer. Game changer. I don't have to keep a fucking, I don't, it's a game changer. There's no question. I don't have to keep a fucking uh, 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 collection of tricks that didn't sell. And I got to figure out how to sell those. You know what I mean? In my, in my, in my, in my uh, warehouse little area here, I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about trying to, none of that. And I get to film the, the the actual product while the event's happening. Yeah. So there's no more I have to procrastinate trying to film stuff and, oh, I got to get this filmed. I got to get this filmed for this trick, for this trick. You know how that is. Mm -hmm. It gets really, really exhausting. How tired are you when you're done filming something? How tired are you? Fucked. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, really, really tired. Now, people don't know this, but how many times have you filmed three or four items a day? You're, you're, you're exhausted, dude. You're, yeah, you're, you're jelly. Yeah. yeah. It, it, this solves all the problems. And it also solves exposure. And here's why. At least with the effects you're putting out. The people who are paying $100 are not people who are going to expose this stuff, dude. They know the price, the sacrifice of that hundred dollar bill. They worked hard for that bill. Mm. They want this information for themselves. It's exclusive for a reason. Because they know that this isn't going out to every single person. These ideas are passed to the most deserving people. Because they're not going to expose what you're putting out. Because they have a dog in the race as well, not just you. Yeah. I don't see this going into a lot of magic drawers right away, do you? Of course not. Not at all. It's brand new material on items either they've never seen or they've have in their, they've seen before. So we're breathing new life into this. We're 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 really 
uh, uh, slashing the idea of exposure, at least with these people. And and you're providing every single thing they need, and they get one on one, close, connected opportunity to talk to you and to go through the material with everybody there at the same time. And then they get to rewatch that. It's a whole different thing than just watching someone do something and then trying to rewind and wait, how's he holding the coin? Wait, what's the is that right hand or left? Oh man, I can't do this. I don't know. I'm sure that happens a lot to people. I'm sure that happens. It's never talked about, but that's a problem. Yeah. They're not gonna be they're not gonna they're not gonna be uh excited about buying your next thing if they couldn't even do that last thing. Would you do that? No. No. But if it's a community, and, and it brings, and the thing, the other thing is it brings the community together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One existence, one idea, one concept, one group of people talking about the same subject is, is such a beautiful idea. It's the same thing that music does to people. You don't feel you don't you don't see a note when it's played, but you can you can experience it emotionally when it's played. And when you hear people sing together at the same time, they're connected at a very specific goal. And they're united in that one goal. Yeah. And with a workshop, you're united within that one goal. And then they get a killer fucking three to four hour workshop at the end, too, plus with all the props. With personal instruction. How much more excited are they too? What's that? With personal instruction. Yeah, it's incredible. It's a great idea. Personal instruction. Uh, and how much more excited are they when they're done with the workshop? Because you 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 know how how many times when you're done with the workshop, you're just like, God, I love this material. I can't wait to try this something. Like, ah, uh, you know, that you immediately go to the mirror. You immediately, I don't care how tired you are. I've seen it happen in my own life. I've seen it happen in other people's life. You immediately start working on it more. Yeah. It, 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 it you become infested with the idea more, so I think it's nothing. It, it ticks all the boxes across across the lane, man. Across the lane, it's a great idea. It takes one drop in the bucket to change everything, just to make a ripple. So you're emailing people out on your mailing list when uh, workshops are going to become available, because I know these things are going to sell out quickly. Yeah, they usually sell out within three days, dude. Yeah, I mean, obviously, a forty dollar ob object, a forty dollar product compared to a hundred dollar product, is that it's for a lot of people. It's a different time delay. You know, you know what I mean. Uh, it's usually it's it's a, it's a I'm going to get this. I hope I can get this, or I'm getting it right now. Right? It's those three things. Um, and uh, you know, fifty dollar one's going to be you know that'll sell out within twenty four hours. Um, these kind of things, when it's a hundred dollars. I've noticed they sell out within three days. Within three days. Yeah. It's pretty fucking quick. Uh, which is about the time period I, I assumed for this, honestly. Mm. Um, but yeah, so right now, if you go there, on the link at the bottom, uh, uh, there's 13 seats left. And I just put this out today uh, for a 16 seat uh, Vanish workshop. And I'm going to be teaching everything on Vanish. Everything. Everything I've ever come up with with Vanish. Uh, and why not? It's in its it's in its bestseller days right now, you yeah. know. It's on its it's on its fifth reproduction with Illusionist. Says the says why not? It, says everything, man. It says everything. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm so excited about this. I, you know, I, like I said, I've done the whole marketing magic game and is, putting things out. You say that um, you know this is something that's great for every creator, and I disagree. I don't think. I think it needs to be. A Greg Wilson, it needs to be a Justin Miller, it needs to be somebody that's got a lot of fucking knowledge. You know, there's creators out there mm. bought out mm. one trick and they wonder why they're not more famous. Yeah, you're right. No, yeah, you're right. The thing is, you know, anybody can have a good idea, you know, but the only way you can actually make decent money as a creator is by bringing out good idea after good idea after good idea and have a track record. You have a knowledge base, you have a track right. record. You have a ton of experience. You also, right, we know as we, right, we also know, you know, I know, there's creators out there that 
aren't very good performers that maybe can't even do their own mm. trek. You put them in a live right. environment where yeah. they're trying to teach this. They're gonna, <clears throat> they're gonna flap over their words. They're gonna perform it badly. Uh, you know, That's they're right. not gonna be able to communicate effectively how this thing works. They don't understand the psychology behind it. They don't understand anything. They just came up with a a cool toy that they then um, marketed to people and and that's all they've got. You need to have a knowledge base. You know, have, you need to have the ability to teach. You need to have the ability to pivot when somebody asks you a question. You need that's to have right. the, that's right. off the track and then bring it back onto track. You need to have the ability to actually fucking speak to people and actually deliver that's a right. conversation in a competent way. You need to have the ability to perform. And all of this stuff is something that you have. This is something that Greg Wilson has. This is something as much as mm. I'm not his biggest fan and I never will be. No, you have it in space. You have it in space. You have it in space. Yeah. Somebody, I'll say somebody, it so you don't have to feel like it. I'll say I'll say it so you don't have to feel like uh, it's an ego thing. You totally have it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. But I was going to say, the other people that the other the other person, I'm not his biggest fan, and I know you are, but I got to give credit where credit's due. Somebody like uh, Michael Weber could do this in a heartbeat, inside out, back to front. Yeah. 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 He, he doesn't need knowledge. that though. He's he's a warrior. No, he too. doesn't. But I'm just yeah. saying, yeah, there's yeah, certain yeah. people that yeah. could do this. There's certain people that yes. could. Um, and, yes. and you absolutely can. 100 percent don't have a doubt yeah well that's and that's what i figured out man because it's like i can do this like i have so many ideas like you know the hardest thing about when you're creating something too is it's never done oh. so you're always thinking of other, the product's out right it's it's out it's out in the world it's now the baby's out the fucking the, the the, 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 it's on its way to college, right? The child's on its way to college <laughs> when it's in people's hands. Well, we still have nine ideas or 10, 10 ideas that we didn't put on that product. Yeah. Where do we put them? Well, what do we do? We come up with version two. Yeah. And it's like, we put them on that. And it's like, well, what about those other? It's like, so with this workshop, I get to exhaust myself. Hmm. With everything I know about one thing. And I get to pass it on to the community so they get to have that knowledge. And then I get to have my own original ideas that's connected to these props and connected to these effects. And it, it just really is the best way to get information out today. Because the problem with exposure, it's not exposure itself. The people don't understand that. It's not exposure itself. It's the fact that it's not taught correctly. When they're exposing something, they're not teaching it. They're just showing how it's done. They're not teaching why it's done. Mm -hmm. That's what exposure is today. Mm -hmm. They're teaching the how it's done the mechanicalness of it, but they're not teaching why that thing was created to produce a thing. You can, it's completely missing. That's why people love exposure videos because they get to see how it's done, but they don't get to see why it's done. When you see a magician perform, you get to see why it's done. When you see a magician teach, a creator teach, you get to see why it's done. I'll give you a great example. Big old fucking, this is now, it's, it has now become, so if at first it was the most, sorry about that, there we go, that's better, someone's come through on a, my phone, um, uh, my pull through, my pull through with the pinky, okay, was the most performed effect on social media before it got exposed. Now it's become the most exposed effect of social media. That's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. I kind of like that. It's kind of funny. I hate it and I like it. Here's my point about uh, why something is done and how something is done. Okay, This is what they do. They go, first of all, they do it poorly. They just go like this. They go, uh, right? And then they go, here's how it's done. Then they just show this. And then they go like this. That's all they do. That's all they do. That's the only video. That's the whole video. Do you know why I put it on the pinky? No. 
Yeah, take a take a take a professional creative guess. Why I why it's on the pinky instead of here as a, the way Patrick does it, um, or like this, or like this, the way that I saw Magic Balik do it a long time ago, which I don't understand that because you can literally go up with it. Why do you think it's on the pinky? At a guess, uh, the pinky is slightly smaller, less distance for it to go over. It's the finger that's nearest the audience, so there's less. Um, you know, it's easier to follow what's going on. Uh, the pink is very flexible, maybe, and I, 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 it could be any one of those three. I don't know. Maybe other other fingers are flexible too. Other fingers are very flexible too. Okay, okay. Hold on. You you named you named one thing that was absolutely correct. It's the staging of the thing. It's it's staged perfectly. Mm -hmm. It's here. The only reason the reason that ring thing works so well is because it's a it's a statuesque moment. Yeah. It's a look at this, watch this moment without saying it. It's a display moment. This is a display moment. You know something's about to happen. You don't know what. Okay? The other reason is because... And this is what they don't teach in exposure videos. This is the whole point of the fucking pull through. This is the whole point. I push first. And then I pull through. Mm. Why do I do that? Because I'm giving the audience the tension they need to understand how impossible this is. If I go here first and I do that, there's, that's not magical at all. That's not impossible at all. It's not because it could come right off the finger. But if you push first and then do it, mm -hmm. you literally yeah. can feel the tension of that uh moment. And I'm pushing towards something that can't, it, it can't come off this way. You lose that entirely when it's exposed by just the how. Yeah. So when ECAT does it and she exposes it, she does it completely wrong. And every other person I've seen expose it now is completely wrong. So you're not getting the teaching. You're not getting the actual effect of why it does what it does and the reason it needs to be the way it needs to be. We as creators go through so much fucking blood, sweat, and tears to get to that. Yeah, yeah. It Absolutely. doesn't work like this because it, it looks like it comes off the finger and thumb. If I did it like this, it looks interesting. It looks interesting, but there's an option here. The brain immediately goes to it's coming off somehow this way. But if I push first and then pull through, it's impossible. That's impossible. But if I hold it here and just go like that, immediately your brain goes, well, it just slips it off. Yeah. So what it also tells me is the people that have exposed it have never learned it properly themselves because they learned it from another source that didn't teach it. Well, with these workshops, you get to learn the whys, not just the hows. On the subject of exposure, mm. off topic, you told me before we went on camera that you had a solution mm. to the exposure problem. Illusion yeah, I do. Illusionists have been making big waves recently because they've made this big grandiose gesture uh, that they're going to enlist the magic community to, uh, you know, like self-police exposure videos. And, uh, you know, they're going to... Yeah, me and G have had long conversations over text over this. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I... Look, yep. me and Illusionists don't... Yeah, really absolutely. Hey. I applaud them. That action is action. Non action is action, and non action is non action. At least you're taking action. At least something. They're something's trying, At least they're something's trying happening. something. Absolutely. Brilliant. They're trying something. Damn right. But somebody yep. who yep. basically, yep. I don't think there's a single person <clears throat> in the world that has achieved more when it comes to shutting down exposure than you have. We talked about magicians against piracy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it yep. took too much of your time, which is why you stopped doing it, but you were making yeah. a difference yep. back in the day. And you turn around to me and you say, uh -huh. you think you have a solution? I'm interested. I've never heard you talk about this before. What's the solution, Justin? It's real simple. 
I mean, if this is the game we're in, exposure. Yeah. And other people are exposing our magic, and they're yep. getting views. On, I don't care about the views and likes, subscribes. I don't. I, I could care less. My YouTube channel has four thousand people. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm yep. not in it for that. My my Instagram has fourteen thousand nine hundred nine nine hundred. I think because a lot of people came from uh, Facebook, and I had five thousand plus over there. And my fan pages. So then I've gotten more people from that. So you know that I'm that I'm that I want. I want to keep building that. That's a, there's a reason I'm I'm using Instagram more than anything. Well, if everybody's exposing our stuff and they're teaching it badly, the only solution is for us to teach it wonderfully and perfect. Okay. If if the if the problem is that the amount of information that's out there is exposure of the effect or of the concept and it's misinformation, then the solution is the right information to the same people who are watching, watching that, watching that stuff. I was watching, I came up with this uh, because I saw a video illusionist put out on YouTube and it was an instruction. It was a tutorial of mine of, um, uh, what is it? What is it? What trick is it? Have you seen this? No. Did you know this? You didn't know this? No. Yeah, um, let's see, Justin Miller, Illusionist. I'm looking right now. Yeah, go to the Illusionist website, uh, the other uh, website. Go to the Illusionist uh, uh, um, YouTube. And uh, I'll tell you Oops. which video it is. And they put this out. And I, I uh, what is this? Yeah, here we go. So it was my, um, they put this out 11 months ago and it's my, um, oh shit, my torn and restored, we're tear, tear, and then it just, you can make objects change and other objects too with this, but so imagine these are pieces of card, right? So these are pieces of card, right? And then you come over like this and then it, it restores, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. They put this out as a tutorial of what I shot of the project of the bold project, because this was on the bold project. I see it. They use the exact footage. Yeah. They use the exact footage of the performance and me teaching. And I started watching this and I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. That's the answer. Meet the creator teaching it. So I think when we do these projects with Illusionist and these other companies in the contract, there needs to be, and with and I, I don't know if Mercury's will do this kind of stuff, but there needs to be in the contract, I give you permission to clip tutorials out of the project after the sale have gone through six months or whatever, and put the actual tutorials on YouTube and social media. I know Lloyd has talked about this because he said, like, uh, when he bought out Cognito, the app that he did, uh, which I love, mm -hmm. he said, uh, "I want to put, I want to put the tutorial on YouTube because people can't buy it without, the, people can't use it without the app. But by looking at the tutorial, they're going to see how good the trick is. You know, L Lloyd is another person who puts videos up on YouTube, but they're all his own creation of stuff. Yeah. You know? And he does right, 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 right. spend time talking in the tutorials about how the yeah. trick." It's not just here's a gimmick. Yeah. Thanks. He, yeah. he, it's long form video. I think I think he's the I think he's the model. I think he's the model. There's no question. I I I I, I really struggled with the Lloyd thing for a while. I'm not I'm not going to uh, pitch it. I was like, oh man, because I, I was talking to somebody about this too. You know, we've given we. It's weird in the magic community. We've given licenses to certain people to expose and other people not. It's really weird, and we've never had a conversation of why we've chosen what we've chosen. It's weird, man. It's weird. So Lloyd's gotten away with it. And I think I know the answer, by the way. Lloyd's gotten away with it. Sankey got away with it. Sankey was the first one to do it, by the way. Sankey was the first one to do it. Lloyd was not the first one. Sankey was the first one. He set the standard. He set the, pr he set the well, whole the thing. Difference, the difference with what Sankey did and what Lloyd did is Sankey was revealing even stuff with just a regular deck. 
uh, Lloyd no, I get that. reveal gimmicks like, hey, this is how to build this insane thing that's going to do this. No, 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 no. But Sankey didn't start off that way. He did not start off that way. He was just revealing his own stuff. He did not start off that way. He now has become, okay, I'm just the library one. Well, I'll teach you this shuffle too. And this is what it's yeah. going or whatever. So th that's what he does now. But he does not. Uh, he In the beginning, he did not do that. No. He did all of his own stuff. Uh, but he, so he's the model. He's the model. Lloyd is, is Lloyd has taken what Sankey's done and, and taken it to <clears throat> a, 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 a greater potential on a greater level because Lloyd's magic's different. Yeah. That's why. Lloyd's magic is not designed for the... Um, practical magician that every magician can do. No, no his no, no, magic no. is designed for a very niche certain group of people, but he also gets the respect from people who see how his ideas work. So he gets that as well. So that's why I think Lloyd is taking what Jay has done to a, a totally different level. You know, just hand, and you know, there's no question. But we got to give Jay, we got to give Jay to do for sure. He, he started this. And 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 when he started it, of course, I was like, "Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Come on, exposure, exposure!" But if that's what, if that's, and I've come to realize this, if that's the game we're in, we're in this game of exposure because that's what it's about right now. Then why should we not, the creators, be the one exposing it and teaching it the correct way? Yeah. So I'm going to, t I'm going to, so on camera right now, and listen, I've had to struggle through this. And, and come to this conclusion myself. I'm from the background. You don't expose anything. You don't. But but the problem is with exposure, the wrong stuff's being taught the wrong way. So magic is not getting the, the, the connection of the person learning the magic is not getting the full the, the thing, thing. The thing is, YouTube is a gateway for a lot of people to get into magic. And you know as well as me, new people coming into magic. It really is, yeah. It's a good thing. New people coming into magic is a new thing because it helps everybody. As new people get into magic, uh, conventions get bigger, lecturers get more bookings, <clears throat> creators get more people that potentially want to buy their stuff, more buzz, more buzz, more buzz, more people are booking shows because more magicians are appearing on talent shows and stuff like that. It just, it's just good for more people to come into magic. And YouTube like totally agree. is, you know, back when I first got into magic, you went to a library, you got a book, you you, you read the book, you you, <laughs> you learned the thing. These days, <clears throat> the biggest library in the world, you know, you want to learn how to do something, you go look on Well, YouTube. that's why people don't feel this, that, exactly, but that's why people don't feel the sacrifice, because when we used to go to a library, that means that we had to sacrifice, our parents had to sacrifice getting up and taking us, they had to sacrifice something. We yeah. had to sacrifice our Saturdays. We had to sacrifice. Like, well, it's not like we were popular, probably. <laughs> we had to sacrifice a lot. But no, but we had to go to libraries. We had to sacrifice going to the and 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 there was this there's this beautiful moment of going there and getting your library card and then find the magic section, right? And you're like, oh, what do I want to learn about this time? All right, the history of magic, or oh, go, I, oh, what, a handbook of magic. What is this? Okay, oh yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. it's a stack of books, right? And then you go home, and you just pour through those books, man. And you sacrifice time and energy to learn. People don't sacrifice time and energy to learn anymore. YouTube has taken that away from people. And if that's the case, we have to figure out a way to put that back in or use the system which is in place already, which is YouTube, to magnify the problem and then do it the correct way. And the only way I can see how is by teaching the correct way your own shit. And to credit, if you're doing a shuffle, to credit Herb Zero. Here's where you can find Herb's stuff at. But you you credit everybody within the context of whatever's happening, and you teach your own shit, and it gets out there. Yeah. Because here's the problem. Here's the problem with the bounty hunter thing. Here's the, and I haven't told G this. I've never told anybody this. You cannot have the video you have of me up right now, the 20 restored card that they have, mm -hmm. and say that you're a bounty hunter fighting to get these kind of videos taken down other places. Yeah. You can't. You can't be honest and do that. You can't. 
Oh, wait, wait. You can put it out, but you don't want other people to put it out? Yeah. Mm. What's the argument? See if you can find an argument for me. The why that would be a good thing. I, I can't. I can't. You can't be a company and say we're we're against exposure. We don't want exposure. Da, 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 da. But then completely take away the idea of the magician customer aspect with the company of the magic company and take a product they've already bought and then put it up for free on the same company's channel that is against exposure and free to everybody the world yeah i know i agree you i have think to choose one, illusionist... you have to choose one or the other yeah. you have to choose one i of think the what other. illusionist was saying with the whole um bounty hunter thing is they don't want people teaching their intellectual property they don't want ecat or anybody else teaching the stuff that they have copyright over yeah but they can't do anything they, they can't do anything with ecat they, 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 they can't, can't. They can't they copyright can't. or anything yeah i know they yeah i know yeah. they can't and i don't know they can if, only they can I only do know. it if they use original footage they can only do yeah. it if they, can, if they use the original yeah. footage that the company produced and that's the only time they can do it yeah. i'm just and i can't believe i'm sticking up for illusionists but but i think that what they were saying is like they want to be if they if that it's their stuff it's their ownership of their stuff if they want to teach it if they want to put the tutorial up on youtube then it's their decision they don't want somebody else teaching it because they as the people that own the intellectual property over that trick they own this justin miller product they own this they own the original tutorial if they want to choose to put something up right then they have the right to choose to do that because nobody knows how to do that Justin Miller routine of that bold project better than Justin Miller. They will put it out if they exactly. do. But somebody else trying to do it, it's going to be trickled down. It's going to be watered down. It's going to be Chinese whispers. You know that you you start off with something because of Chinese whispers, it's going to end up looking like something else. You have Justin yeah, Miller yeah. something. And then somebody else teaches it, and somebody else teaches <clears> it off <throat> that. Somebody else teaches it off that. All of a sudden, the tenth person who teaches it, it's a fucking abomination. Illusionists want to it's be horrible. in control yeah. of the the content that goes out, and they choose to release something that they, you know, that's their choice. And and actually, they're right. You know, I I get this bad rap for hating illusionists. I don't fucking hate illusionists. I like illusionists. Me and G don't always see eye to eye. Ironically, we've yeah. never sat down for a drink. I think if me and G sat down, I think we'd have a lot in common. But we've never. I done guarantee, if you guys sat down with a drink, you 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 guys would get along in our Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, so. I agree. <laughs> and I don't. I I think illusionists are doing a lot of good things. And I think that what oh, they've done this last yeah. year, especially since G has taken over at illusionist, I think that what he's yeah. done oh, it's, he's it's, turned it's, that thing round compared to when it was the, back. The path they're on, on the path yeah. they're on is, is yeah, it's yeah. it's so exciting. I do to watch ride them it. sometimes over dumb shit that they do. Yeah. But but that's my job as a YouTuber. My job is to point out stuff uh, partially that's gone right and we all do dumb shit baby we all do dumb shit everyone's done dumb right? shit i yeah. could do a thousand videos on the stuff i've done but the bottom line is i don't hate illusionist i'd like to see them succeed right. i'd like you know you know as well as me i'm a wrestling fan and <laughs> yeah. I, i've been a wwe fan till i die the aew i don't think is as good a product doesn't mean i want to see aew fail right. because ultimately them holding uh, them them holding events is going to make wrestling in general better it's the absolutely same. it's the absolutely. same absolutely they them succeeding is going to make the magic industry a better place i totally want agree. to succeed doesn't mean i can't point yeah. out the dumb shit but it's the same with murphy's if I have to have one more yeah. fucking tutorial where I have to put in that fucking password and then it asks me for the password again, I swear to God, <laughs> I swear to God. Wait, website, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's true. Their fucking website is like. It's, oh, it's, dude, don't even get me started on the Web Murphy's the website, website, dude. Is I held can do together a whole by fucking, fucking podcast. Back. Yeah, the whole website is stuck together by sticky back plastic and fucking ticker tape and fucking. I just, street. I just, I, I just talked to Joanne about this. My, yeah. my, the largest letter. fucking wholesaler in the oh, yeah. world of magic, right? And right? their website is fucking 
stuck in the dark ages when it comes to tutorials. I have been wanting to I've been wanting to call Patrick for so long and go listen to me. Please let me change your website. I promise you I can it is, I can make your website so much better cuz I I I'm with you dude cuz I'm in it and I'm like Every time I see the issue, I'm like, okay, I can fix this, yeah. I can fix this. Yeah. That yeah. tutorial thing, dude, that's so, people don't know, people don't know what we're probably talking about, but when you have a special account with Murphy's, as we do, uh, <laughs> you get access to things that other people, this whole exposure game is such a weird thing because, well, here's what's weird. Magicians have given certain magicians license to expose and other people they didn't. Yep. They gave Sankey a license to expose. I think he, they gave him because he was the first one to try it out. Mm -hmm. He was the first one to try it out. Yeah. Um, but then they gave Lloyd the, uh, a, 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 a pass. Yep. And they've given other people a pass. So where? Why do you think they draw a line? Where is? Why do you think that happens? I don't know. It's a interesting question, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. It really, really is. Like, why does it happen? Why did? Why do magicians take sides immediately? And they did. They absolutely did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I don't hear anybody bitching about Lloyd's exposing videos ever. Except people still in the mindset that think that we can't expose anything anymore. And I was in that mindset too. But listen, if it's going to be exposed by other people, I'm going to teach it. So that's the other thing I'm doing. If I see anything exposed by me, anything, and it's a product that I've done with another company, and it's already out there, I'm going to make a video and I'm going to show it the right way just with my video. Then I'm going to put it out there. Yeah, it's the best thing to do because nobody's going to be able to. I'm not going to allow yeah. misinformation. That's exactly right. I'm not going to allow misinformation of my stuff to get out there anymore. It's not going to happen. No. I, I cringe every time I see someone go like this and like, oh, fuck. It's going to be bad. It's going to be so bad. Yep. It's it hurts. It hurts, man. It hurts. I know. I'm not even I'm not hurt anymore that it's being exposed. I'm hurt that it's not being taught correctly. Yep. Because that's the thing. I didn't sit here and come up with this shit because I was bored. <laughs> yeah. This is what I do. This is the meaning of my life. Uh, yep. uh so I'm just not gonna let people expose it the wrong way anymore. I'll just teach it. That's the way to be. Best way yeah, to be. Fuck it. I agree with you. Totally fuck agree with it, you. Man. That's going to do a lot more good than trying to make bounty hunters. I Again, I applaud what Illusionist are doing. I just don't think it's going to work. I, I applaud them too, but I agree with you. I think it is, uh, it's going to be, and I think Illusionist should reveal more stuff. Show yeah. more clips. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. The response has been amazing from these comments too. Not all these people are magicians. A lot of them probably are, but not everyone is, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, at least they're seeing it the correct way. Yep. Here's what I wrote about it. I wrote something eight months ago. They put this up 11 months ago, and I found it eight months ago. So let me just real quick, if it's okay, can I read what yeah, I yeah, wrote? Right, yeah. <clears throat> I've been getting a ton of emails and DMs asking, how do you feel about e-uploading your tutorials? Well, as many, many of you know, I've been strongly against the exposure of magic in any form if it's not directed to magicians. I have been crystal clear on the stance on this, on my stance on this. One of those factors is because my material has been poorly taught, if you can call it teaching even, uh, by people who have no business teaching anything, let alone others' material. But I have changed my stance after watching this. I applaud E for using the original footage of mine to teach the correct way. You're not learning my material secondhand or third party, so to speak. You are learning from the creator himself. And the bonus is that I've already been paid for the project. So I have no problem with it being out there to a bigger audience. And I didn't have to refilm it. Now I'm willing to do that now because I've taken another stance. But when I saw this for the first time, I'm like, I, I didn't have to like go past my morals and be the one to, you know, expose it. <laughs> yeah. It's already there, Greg. Yeah. Exactly. Right? What a beautiful thing. Uh, listen, we can, we can't stop exposure. It will never happen. The best we can do is learn from the best. And we'll always, and that will always be the creators. Bravo to E. I look forward to the next Justin Miller tutorial. Smile face, smiley face. Ho! Oh, and the best thing is, is that I did not have to move the needle of my moral compass one bit. When, when, when. Thank you all for enjoying my material, and my crazy ideas for over twenty-two years. Crazy. 
That's the answer, man. Yep. So to everybody listening who has stuff that's been exposed, just go and make a video and, and, and do it yourself and say, listen, this is why I'm doing this. And say this, say this. It's important to say this. This is why I'm doing this. I'm not doing this to get clout. I'm not doing this to get fucking views and likes and subscribes. I don't care about that. I'm doing this so that the correct information is out there and yep. not the false information. Yep. That's why I'm doing this. And now here we go, folks. You're learning it directly from the creator. One, I bet your channel will fucking jump up like a motherfucker because they're actually seeing the creator do it. And he's doing it, and he or she's doing it for a righteous reason and not for a, a reason of greed or a power struggle. You know what Absolutely. I mean? A power grip. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. 100%. I told you we did. Have we, start, have we started recording yet? <laughs> I think we did. In fact, I'm about to wrap this up because I've got to I've got to be I've got to be somewhere else in about an hour and I've got to get ready up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We yeah. I've been doing this for 3 Maybe hours. Whatever. How long I, how long Are we at we, 3 hours now? We're about 3 hours, which is quite short for us, oh, so cool. but I think that opens up for a Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we need to we need to do a part 2 in about uh maybe a uh, month's time. Uh, we can revisit all of this and set the world to rights again. I well, we'll that's... look and see how everything. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll you know we will have enough uh, workshops under our feet and a couple other things, and uh, we'll have enough information of how exposure's gone and stuff like that. Look, I, I'm at the I, look. I can just say this: I'm at the level now where exposure's going to happen. We have to deal with it. The best thing that we can do is get the right information out there to the same people. That's it, and okay. and it shows that we're the one that created it. You know, so learn it from the creator. Don't learn right. it from other people. I can you know, uh, and buy and buy seats at my workshop, please. And and so, and yeah. So if you want to be in my mailing list, I'm yeah. going to put a link down below. I'm going to put a link down below. Hmm. You want to go to www.mentalsites. That's M E N T A L sites. S I G H T S mentalsites.com. You want to go on there. You want to do two things. First of all, you want to check and have a look around the whole site, specifically check about the workshops. It's the first link at the top. Secondly, you want to go and sign up to the mailing list because these things sell out in two or three days. Second link. Second. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be the first yeah. link next to the homepage. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, right. on, go Sorry. on, go on the mailing <laughs> list yeah, because j j j these things sell out in two or three days. If you're on the mailing list, you're right. not going to get spammed. You're going to get an email when there's a new workshop yeah. out. You can go check it out. You can see what the content is and you can get on there because if you don't, you will miss out. You'll find out about it on this channel or you'll find out about it through some Facebook page or something. You'll find out about it somewhere. And by that point, it'll be too late. Go and sign up. And you're going to miss Craig going to be on the Lucid Dream uh, I'm going to be on the Lucid workshop. Dream. And I'm going to be goodness. bringing more material that I've been working on since the release of Apparition earlier this year. And I'm going to be sharing it exclusively oh, yeah. right there. Oh, it's so cool. Um, this is going to be cool. This is going to be awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, man. And, and JM, it is always right. an honor to have you on the channel, man. Every single oh, time. Man, I can't on, tell you. It's great. You know, it's so you're, funny. You're too kind. All these years ago, when I mm. <laughs> when I when I oh. sat there on that sofa with David Penn and I yeah. did that card trick with those Justin people. Miller does shit magic. <laughs> How's that <laughs> for <magic>. fucking <laughs> It was the episode too where you guys were you were reviewing the Minotaur uh DVD. Yeah. It was the Harlan uh, and uh fucking um uh, who else is in there? Mark Leventhal. Mark Leventhal. Yeah, 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 Mark Leventhal yeah. and Dan Harlan. And they had just put out the Minotaur on DVD, remember? And yep. uh, and it was one of those tricks. I can't remember. It was like the 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 matching trick or something. Yeah, it was. Instead yeah. of matching, it just said, Justin Miller does shit magic. <laughs> oh, my God. I remember watching that. That was the greatest thing. I was so upset, too. Cause it was, and the reason I was upset, because remember... And I think we've talked about this personally. I don't know, pri or privately. I don't think we've done it uh, publicly. But I wasn't upset that you that took a jab at me. I, I, I wasn't upset about that. I was, <laughs> my ego is so hurt. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> like, you, like, you can go after me for anything else. My divorce, uh, being a pastor at the time when I was, losing my faith. Uh, the way I look, the way I dress, like John Lovick did in one of his fucking reviews of uh, Capture. Although he did say capture was a great trick, so I used that in his review. I used that as the quote. He goes, Justin Miller sucks no matter. I hate his clothes and everything else. 
but captured a great trick. So I just went, captured a great trick, John Lovick. Fuck you, John Lovick. And uh, he, uh, he's another one of those snakes, by the way. And uh, uh, so, uh, what was it? What was I saying? The, uh, the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You hated, oh. you hated the fact I went after you, magic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, yeah, you could have gone after anything. But well, you fucker pushed that button, dude. Because that's what it I knew. It wasn't we'd just the middle. Of the... That's what I knew oh. would get to you. I knew exactly how to get to you. Because I don't. <laughs> that's what I, mean. I was like, what? Oh, that hurts, actually. Fuck. Oh, dear me. And who knew that all well, these I'm not the later... one. Ca- well, I'm not the one. I'm not the one who used to carry a fucking uh, hole puncher in a sauna. Well, you know, David Penn forced me to do that, man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> A whole oh, fuck. We went after you on that one too. We went after you on that one. Yeah, not, not my fun. Yeah, I'll never forget. Yeah, I was the... like, oh yeah, oh yeah, you're wearing jeans. I remember what Beastmith said in one of the uh, the videos I did against you guys. Oh yeah, when's the last thing you saw someone wear a jeans in a fucking sauna? <laughs> Some of the videos. Then he you pulls out be... a hole puncher. Then he pulls out a hole puncher. <laughs> All the videos that you and B. Smith did were fucking hilarious. I was sitting there watching them. Go, oh. This is brilliant. This is the funniest shit. We were we were having so much fun. Well, we were we were we were stuck in Tennessee uh, on a lecture. We were doing our lecture tour at the time, and uh, it was which was so much fun. Uh, just uh, so seeing the, it was so much fun seeing the video, and then we see the next video, and then we responded, and then we all and what would we do? We always posted that on uh, on the cafe, right? We had the. Yep. Dude, that ca- is that cafe thread still there? Yeah, it is somewhere. Man, I'm Will you find you, a, I, I, you got a lot to there do. There has still not been as big a thing as you and me going at each other in 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 magic since. There, I, there, I don't think I don't think there ever will be. I don't think there ever nope. will be. Nope. We did so. We tried something brand new. We did something, and it fucking worked, man. It was so much fun. Yeah, so and the hilarious fun. thing is, we never uh, talk to each other about it. It's not like no, you no. It. Some people are like, oh, <clears throat> Craig. No, we never fucking said a word, but we both knew. At one time, we both, we both knew. We both knew. Well, I well, I didn't know in the beginning. I didn't know in the <laughs> beginning because 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 all right. Here's why. Here's why. Because this was so. There was so much realness and anger in your voice, and it was like. If you watch that video again, you you're spitting at one. Yeah, point. but here's you're the thing, spitting. right? Here's the thing you need to understand. You're like Matt. this. Justin Miller does shit. Ma- and then you look at the camera, you're like, do you get it? Yeah, Justin, you do shit magic. You fucking wank. You fuck. No, dude, you like you went hard on me. I did. So I'm I like, did. so I'm like, it is this real? B? I showed B Smith. I was like, is this real? <laughs> he goes, dude, he, what did you do to? I'm like. I don't know, dude. like, what's going on? So for me, it probably was about the third video where I go, oh, we're playing a game right now. Okay. And that's when <laughs> me and B started doing the um, the couch videos. The couch this videos. is what people don't get about the rants, right? I don't, like, it's me playing a character. I've always loved wrestling. And I've right. always been able to, like, right. make people think I'm angry and I'm not. You know what I fucking hate about Justin Miller? I hate his stupid long hair, his stupid glasses. He thinks he's fucking amazing. He's the worst fucking magician in the world. Justin Miller, I fucking hate you. I hate everything you stand wow. for. You are the biggest motherfucker on the planet, and I wish that the magic gods would come and strike you down as God is my witness. I have had enough of you. Fucking die. It's just an act. It's not real. I'm joking. I'm not mad. I love you. People Bro. Think, people think that. Do you understand? Real. It's not real. I guarantee Every people are going to take that out of context. Did. Any rant I ever did was just me Ooh. playing a character. I felt that. I felt that though. If you, <laughs> ooh, that was. Oh, you're good. You're good at acting, then. Because damn, dude, I, for a second as you were doing, I'm like, is this his real thoughts? <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! Is he is he secretly getting his real thoughts out while he's trying to play a character? Is he doing the, the Inception to me? <laughs> that was bravo, dude. You know what's funny though? While you were doing it, my haters were going, "Yeah, finally, great." <laughs> Good, dude. Fuck me. Woo. It's a good game. 
It's just, it's, I, God, I don't so think good. I've ever done a rant. But we didn't really know each other good. Running. We didn't know each other. Yeah, I know, but we didn't know each other that well at all at that time. The mm-hmm. only time we had met before that was when we met at the IBM SEM convention in 2008. Yeah. First convention, there was a combined convention. We met there. And uh, uh, I, that's where Legend, I had just printed a few copies of Legend. Remember when yep. I did it and that whole group of people in the yep. fucking like, destroyed, right? And uh, you had the bag out at that time. The C2 the, bag, I, I think? I just bought the first Mirage coin set out. Maybe. Maybe not. No, no. You, I, no, you had locked in a room without coins. Uh, and then you had the bag thing. And then you had the flipper. Out, yeah, I had the flipper project out. Yeah, 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 yeah. You were with Teo at that time. You were with Teo. Well, it was cool. Well, Magic, well, Magic Shop was owned by Costas and uh, Costas Damianu, and he got bought oh, out. I didn't know that. Yeah, he got uh, it, Costas Damianu ran uh, World Magic Shop with Jim Trainer. What? And then I don't know what, what happened. I don't know what happened, but he got bought out <clears> and <throat> ended up being Dave Penn and and uh, Jim Trainer. And so that's when he left and set up Magic Teo. I was never with Magic Teo ever. I was only ever with World Magic Shop. I just stayed with World Magic Shop when Costas left. Oh wow! Okay, well, you were at the, were you demonstrating at their booth that year or something? I was uh, I was on the World Magic Shop booth. Yeah. Was that where Teo was? Th- there was no such thing as Teo back then. That was literally World Magic Shop. Magic Teo didn't come into existence until Costas left World Magic Shop. What year was that? Probably about 2011. Really? Interesting. 10, 10 11. Wow. Seven. Why don't I, I probably just remember. <clears throat> okay. So, okay. Okay. I probably don't remember the yin yang sign then. Okay. Okay. Well, I didn't know that. I had no idea. I had no clue. Yeah. Um, uh, but that, but, so we had a great meeting there. I, I was like, yeah, we had a great, we, we were both respectful of each other and our ideas. And, and it was, it was beautiful. And then when I see this madman, boom, 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 I gotta be honest. I didn't know if it was a joke right away. It was, it was real to me, and because you're really good at playing the villain, dude, you're really good. Yeah, at it. I always but we didn't it. know each other. We didn't know each other enough on the way to know that that was a joke. Yeah, on the wizard part of you, it was my job to play the bad guy. Yeah, you did really well. I, I, by the way, I rewatch a lot of those uh, when I'm just like I want to like try something new. Like again, I rewatch a lot of that. And, shit. And, and you're, and pretty much you're everything, so everything on those videos. I remember people always say to me, "Oh, I love that episode where Dave Penn made you say chop over and over again, and they were counting the amount of times that I say chop." That was fucking decided beforehand. It was all decided beforehand. Everything was thought out. It looked spontaneous. It wasn't. It was like, right, okay, you're going to get angry about this product. Uh, you, we spoke, spoke about it beforehand. What do you think of this? I think it's a bag of shit. You're oh, kidding cool. me. You're kidding me. Everything was thought out before. Have you ever revealed this before? Have you ever nope. told people this before? Nope. That's awesome, dude. Oh, that's so good. Well, you guys did a hell of a job, man. I mean, it really did feel... It's Every single episode, it looks like it's a spontaneous a response me, me to each Penn other. Me and Ken had That's really amazing. good chemistry on, on wow. Penn. We had, I knew exactly what he was thinking. He knew what I was thinking. We could change thing, go, things up on a dime and he would go with it and I would go with it. I, I had a lot of fun doing the Wizard product review, but things all good things. Wow. So it was all a fucking show. That's what the business is that we're With, in. Let me, well, let me ask you a question. Well, here's a great question. Were the, were, the, well, so that was a show, but the reviews itself were not. Oh no, the right? reviews were, were real. totally yeah. real. The reviews were totally real. Gotcha. We spoke beforehand. Gotcha. We watched them together. Because those could be, those could be, those could be, those could be. That could have been part of it. That'd been interesting. Right. The reviews were always 100% real and based on our opinions. It's just, we tried to make it a little bit more of a show. So we were like, well, what can we do in this episode? Right, okay, we're reviewing a Dan Harlan trick. Right, wouldn't it be funny if Craig got up and pretended to take the catch register out and and, and run out into the uh, the yard? That'd be funny, right? Yeah, let's do that. (laughs) We're, we're, we're doing a Devon Knight trick. Oh, right. Okay. Well, here's an idea. Why don't you pretend to uh, order a costume that you need to dress up like Devon Knight and we get an Elvis Presley costume? Yeah, that'd be a really funny idea. So good. It was just about, let's make it a little bit more interesting than just reviews. 
Um, and that was what it was always about. David Penn. Well, you were the Roger and Ebert. You were the Roger and Ebert of magic. You know that, yeah, right? David Penn is an incredible magician and <clears throat> showman. And, Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. I'm really good at improv and I'm really good at doing that sort of stuff. So between the two of so uh, them, the ideas and, and me and him between us action. Did you know? Did you know? This is, I'm sure everybody's getting a kick out of this right now. Listen to this because I didn't know any of this either. Did you know the percentage of what you were going to give each product beforehand? No, no. We had. A, I knew whether he liked something or not, and he knew whether I liked it or not. <clears throat> the, the percentage. And so you played um, off of each other of the. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I got yeah. you. Wow, that's some great insight, man. That's cool. Go. I love yeah. that shit. Well, it did take a while. For, it took like three videos for me to realize it, and then we just started playing with each other. We yeah. went back and forth. We, you know, um, yeah. and then. Um, I, you know what your best episode was? The episode okay. where there was nobody on the couch and the music was playing. Oh, that, that was the best. Like trouble over something. I can't remember. The McBride, the McBride thing. The yeah. McBride the, thing. Man, we thought that we were going to. That really have... fucked you. You guys got hit hard, dude. Well, here's the problem. And here's why you got. Well, now, yes. Now that I think about it, this is the, probably the reason. If they would have known it was a show that was put on. I don't think you would have got hit hard, but they believed it was all fucking real. Yeah. That's why you and got I just hit showed hard. You, I just showed you how good I am at making myself yeah, sound you did. I'm really not. Yeah, you did. Yeah? Wow. So you never told anybody that that was part of that show. The whole, the con like, like, okay, here's what we're going to do. But as I say, the say reviews were real, probably... the scores were real, but we showbizzed it up. And a lot of the time, we had a rough idea of what we were doing, but we wow. would improv with each other. And I would get angry at something, and he would react to it. And then I'd get more angry. Yeah, and he, yeah. He would then say something yeah. that I knew when he said that, that wanted he wanted me to get more angry, and so I would. And, you know, that sort of thing. It was all just a game. It's all just a game. Um, and you I know, think I should have known it was a game the moment you guys, uh, when John Farr comes on and Jonathan Farr comes on, and and gives the um um the announcement of the of the uh disclaimer and you open up a beer and and pen uh eats some chips or some some crisps yeah. or something i think so yeah. Like. yeah and you're just you're looking around you're like looking at your beer you know going around like this and i i, I was in my head i remember thinking i go that's that's showy. That's a little showy. That's it. But it never, it never, it never crossed my mind that that's that right there should have been the evidence that it was a show. Yeah, that right there should have been the evidence that it was a show. No, it, it never crossed my go mind. Go back and watch some of the episodes of the Wizard Product Review with that <clears throat> knowledge, and you'll see them in a completely. Different oh, dude, way. I'm gonna see in a whole new. Uh, I'm gonna watch from day one. <laughs> I have you in a fucking playlist of uh, like six, what, 600 fucking, how many are there, dude? How, how many were there? Fuck tons. Shit loads. Don't know how many. Like 600? Is there 700? Yeah. Did you hit 1,000? I, I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going, I have it in a playlist. You know, they're, still, they're probably at 1,000 now, because they're still going without me, you know, with um, Sean Hayden. And no, 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 no. It's like, it's like, it's like watching, um, it's like watching Reno 911. I only I only accept the first uh, seven seasons. Everything they did after that, I don't care. Those that's not Reno. Everything Wizard product review is you and Penn. That's 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 Wizard baby. There is no Wizard to me. A product review. I've never watched one with a Sean. I've never watched one with all of his guests that he has. Oh, except no, no, that's not true. I watched the uh, the Albo 2.01. Because I was part of the project, <laughs> and they gave amazing review on that. One hundred percent, ninety-five. Thank you guys. You guys were amazing. Thank you very, very much. Um, but I don't. I I just don't watch it. It doesn't interest me. You guys, when you were on, oh, every day watched it every fucking time, man. Yeah, yeah. So we had a lot of fun, dude. And I'm, it's so interesting for people to know now that yeah. the, the little bit of information that was all show. It was all a show. But we are going to wrap this up. Well, I'll speaking of show, yeah. Like <laughs> my next thing, but Justin, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are going to revisit this. We're going to do another one, um, very, very soon. Because, dude, I love you. I love having you on the channel. 
And I would love to every single episode with you on it if I could. Like you are just amazing. <laughs> no, 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 please don't, don't, don't. Nobody wants to see that. That's ridiculous. That's too uh, much of us. Way too much of us. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody who's watching this, I want to go sign up to Justin's mailing list. Go and check out some of the workshops. I'm definitely going to be. Hey, that lace and are there still places left for the uh, for the stripper deck thing? I have uh, no, no. Everything sold out except for Vanish. Everything sold out. Run it again, and I'll definitely be on that one. Um, but obviously, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to be on the lucid. You're going to be on lucid dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to be bringing my A game. Thank you so um, much, man. Thank you so much. No problem, so man. Much. Always, anytime, guys. Leave a comment down below. Let Justin know what you thought of this interview. Once again, we went completely off in a different direction, but that's what we do every single time we do one of these. Um, I will be back again with another video tomorrow. Justin's going to be all over everything, you know, on on, on his Instagram, follow, <laughs> follow him on YouTube, do all that fun stuff. And uh, JM, one more time, man, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Love you, you, brother. Thank you so much, too. Bye. Bye.